Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is where you are. Welcome back to another episode on the Annoyed Dad channel. As you can see, today we are up in the camping field and we are going to do a is it, was it, is it, was it really worth it to open up the campsite this year? Was it worth all of the effort that we went through and uh, all of the hassles and the stresses and the pains that it caused us? Hello, horsey. You're looking slightly bedraggled. So it is today, as I record this, October the 22nd. So we should in theory have nine days left of the season to be going, but I've decided to, I've pulled the plug. We've just had Storm Babette come through. Um, it didn't really affect us too much other than dumping a huge amount of rain, uh, but we got more rain due next week. So I've decided we're gonna end the season here so what we'll do in just a minute is we'll head back over to the office and we'll take a look at some numbers and see what's what we spent and if it was worth it from the financial side of things you can see it's absolutely glorious today weather next week is pretty rubbish you can see how the trees have lost all of their leaves quite early this year i think that's because it's been quite dry and uh yeah they haven't really haven't really gone too well Normally they've kept their leaves until like November, January sort of time, but this year they're gone. But anyway, our plan with that hedge is uh, we're gonna cut it all down. We might just get like a small section done and then another small section and another small section. But because it's willow, it grows really, really quickly. So it won't be long. It will, it will just be like a few months of the growing season and it will be back to another six foot on top of it. But we can use all of these logs as logs for the campers. And you can see, so if we stand here, see how the grass is all leaning that way. That's because the wind just blows straight off the sea, straight up here and pushes it all that way. And we've got uh, all of the apple trees, the apple up here, they're plumb down there. We've got the apple trees growing up. I am gonna plant more hedging because we need more. It was all right for this year, but it needs a little bit more. And I think we're also gonna put another couple of pitches in over here, in between the toilet block and the pylon. I know it's gonna be underneath the lines, but there are some people who were concerned about that and there were others who were just like, yeah, whatever. Don't mean anything to me. But we'll keep this big open space in the middle because as we said at the start of the year, uh, marquees, weddings and that sort of thing are always a possibility. So let's head over to the office. I'll get a bit of paper, I'll get a pen. I've worked out some figures. And let's have a look and see how much it cost me and how much money it didn't make this year. Let's go and see. Okay, so we're down at my office and what we do is we'll run through the numbers. I've made some notes of some things that we've brought and we'll go through and we will see whether if we made a profit or a loss. Obviously, I, I, I already know the answer. So uh, you have to bear with me on this. So to start the campsite in the UK, there are three main ways to do it. Way number one is to get the full planning like what we've done. Way number two is to go through what's called an exempt organisation. And way number three is the 28 day rule, which has now been extended to 60 as long as you get the special permission. So um, the exempt organisation is basically like uh, if you've ever heard of the caravan club say for example they can go to a landowner and they can say we've inspected your site you can now have um 20 pitches on there for this amount of time each year and you can do that now we tried doing that with the campsite through one of the exempt organizations and they were absolutely useless they were terrible um they took forever to respond to us and they only responded after i had an absolute go at them and they turned around and said we were turned down. So for that privilege, that cost me £150. Can you see that there? So, so £150 exempt organisation. Okay, so we spent £150 with them and it was totally pointless. We then went for the planning application. Now the planning application had to be done in two parts. So we done part one, which was the main application and that got us through. And when we done that, they then asked for some um, amendments to be made and for certain things to be done, mainly relating to the drawings around the driveway and for us to be able to submit planting plans as to where 
everything was going to be. So we had to do it over two different applications. The first application was the full application and that cost us £494.20. And then the second application to get past all of the terms and conditions that cost us £148.20. So in total, we spent 600, let me move the camera. So if I put it down, so in total, we spent 600 and 42 pounds and 40 pence just on the planning applications so that is just what goes through the system when you put in a planning application you have to pay money and that's how much money we had to pay that doesn't include what i had to pay for the planning consultant so this was basically the person who came along and they said we'll fill out all your forms for you we'll do everything for you uh, we will put everything in and we will deal with the council and everything else like that. Now, they were all right, but they weren't quick enough for my liking. I was finding out stuff online before they were and they were ringing me up like a week later and saying, oh, do you know it's been delayed again? I'm like, yeah, I know. I, I knew this a week ago. So, um, yeah, but they were OK. They just basically went through other applications for similar things within the area that had been approved and then just copied them onto the forms. Something now, looking back, I realised I could have done myself. So in total, to have that person do some copy and paste for me over two bits because they charged me for the main application and then for the conditions. So it was £1,800 for the main application and £420 for the conditions which comes to £2,220 for the planning consultant. Uh, to go with the plans for the planning application, we also had to have some drawings done. And these really had to be to scale. They had to show everything and it had to be done the way how the planners like it all to be done. And so we had um, somebody come in and they set up everything and they done proper drawings. And they're very, very good drawings. I do like them and uh, I'm able to use them for, for other things now. But in total, to have that person come in and do that and then just maybe like move a couple of bits and then change some bits and then resubmit it, that cost me £1,310. So as you can see, planning isn't cheap. Um, there is no easy way around that. But these are what I call one-time costs. I only have to pay that once. I've now got the planning application. The site has got it. That's going to last forever and a day it doesn't end with the exempt organization i would have had fees year after year after year after year which some people live with other people like me they would have got a little bit cheesed off with it so to go on the site for the glamping we brought two bow tents a five meter one and a three meter one we actually brought them long before the planning went in they cost me because they're good ones 960 pounds for the bow tents. Now, part of the planning application said that we had to do um, drawing, um, not drawings, plantings to be able to screen the site. We had to put in um, a planting plan to explain where all of the hedges are going to go and where all of the plants, because the guy, when he done the planning consultancy and he put in, he said that we were going to plant it up like an orchard. And I thought, yeah, that's all right. But, you know, really, you should have asked me before you said you were going to do that. Um, and that in total come to £612.61, um, 61 pence. So that's for all of the hedges, the trees and everything else like that. Now, from what I can tell, nobody's ever going to come around and check and make sure I've done that. It would only be if there was like a local neighbour who said, oh, I can see everything and it's terrible, I don't like it, then they might turn around and say, well, you really should have done this, but otherwise they're not going to check. But either way, that again is an expense that's gone out, a one-time expense, hopefully, unless the rabbits keep eating it all. So uh, that's not very good. So then we come down to some slightly smaller bits that we had to pay out for. So there was £12.49 on something called the Pink Book. Now, the pink book, if you work in hospitality, hotels, anything else like that, the, the pink book is basically the Bible. It explains everything. It explains everything from like the TV license, uh, if you need it or if you don't, to the discrimination law and what you can and what you can't actually discriminate against. So very handy to have to refer back to. And then we spent £3.58 on the accident book.
So this is all going into the expenses, everything that we've had to pay out for. Uh, obviously, one of the major things that you need, and we spent £480 on it, was insurance. Now, we didn't get that through the NFU, although everybody was telling us, go with the NFU, go with the NFU. So I went, I rang the NFU. They said, yeah, we'll call you back in a week. Three weeks later, they rang me back. I spent something like two hours on the phone going over everything with them. It was totally annoying, totally old fashioned. And then they came back with a quote that was more expensive than the people that we ended up going with. Absolute madness. Uh, so within the bow tents that we had, we provided glamping for people. So they needed uh, bedding and they needed saucepans and they needed all of those sort of like extra bits that, that you put into that. Uh, luckily, a lot of it I was able to get off of my work, which made everything so much easier. But in total for the year, uh, obviously I brought the sheets, the duvet, duvet covers, all of that sort of stuff was all brought brand new. So over the course of the year, we spent £580 and 31p on bedding and that sort of stuff so uh yeah quite a bit of money was spent there but again it's one of those things that it's been brought now we can use it for next year um or the year after hopefully and uh we can just basically go from there so a major thing that we needed on the sites to do and we've done the videos on it was we had to build the toilets now, as you would have seen from the videos, a lot of the materials within that was reusable stuff. But the inserts we had within the composting toilets, which splits up your poo from your pee, they were something like £112 for three of them. Very expensive things. But in total, we spent £398.70 and pence on parts for the toilet so that includes everything from the sawdust to the toilet seats to those inserts to nails screws and god knows anything else that has gone on in there uh, now that might sound like a lot but if i was to go out to try to purchase that as a unit today i would probably be adding a zero onto the end of that so that's actually quite a good deal so with um, all of the bookings and things you need a, a booking system and the booking system is basically um, a thing that sits in the middle and it talks to all of the online agencies and it links up to them. Uh, so if you get a booking from one online agency, it will then mark that as unavailable with all of the other agencies. So it's quite an important one. We use one called Queensborough, um, which has proved to be quite good. And over the course of the year, that cost us £146.60. And, and what you do find with a lot of the softwares is a lot of them charge you for the setup fee. So you have to pay like £99 before you even start just to get everything set up and going. Then there's an ongoing monthly fee. I can sort of understand that, but I think it's a bit... Um, I don't like it very much. Now, there are other places where you are able to have listings and you're able to showcase yourself. And one of those was a website, which is also a forum, which is called ukcampsite.co.uk. And we put a listing on there and I decided to upgrade the listing, you know, woo -hoo. Uh, but it, it actually turns out to be totally pointless. Um, the number of bookings we got through it, the number of inquiries, the number of people coming through on the link to our website because we have all of the tracking set up so I'm able to see where people are coming from. So that was uh, basically £60, £59.99, uh, not needed to have been spent, but we spent it out anyway, but I won't be renewing it next year. Now, other simple things, I had a logo designed and that cost me £10.84p. There's a guy on Fiverr who does it for us and he's brilliant. And we also went onto eBay and we spent £20 on some signs, you know, just a normal thing. CCTV operates in this area, uh, private property do not enter, just those little generic signs. Um, we also made our own. I used to own a sign making business, so I've still got a lot of the equipment and I'm able to make my own signs. But uh, I just went out and I just brought some because it was just quicker, simpler and easier just to do it that way and to get them up. Uh, one of the things that people like to hire from us are the fire pits and they go really well uh, and we we brought three I went to a local 
supply and got some in mild steel uh, with stands and everything and it cost me 82 pounds so we charge 10 pound per hire for them so obviously after nine hires we're into profit with that and we definitely did more than nine hires of the fire pits there next up we're almost at the end don't worry uh, we had to build the honesty shop and if you're a long time reader of the channel you will know that we um, basically had a shed that I was asked to remove with work and we brought it up to the farm and we shrunk it down a little bit and we built it as the honesty shop but we had to buy some parts and bits and pieces for it so we got that honesty shop for 86 pounds not very much at all so once you've got the honesty stock um honesty shop you have to stock it and the sh shelves in there they all came from work they were free so that's not included so we've got the honesty shop stock i will just say i hope it's not too dark but there is a cloud that's just i'm actually sat in my office see office there is a cloud that's just 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 gone over i can't put on the main lights because they flicker like anything on the camera and it's just annoying so i have I hope it's light enough so in total on stock we spent 313 pounds remember that figure because we'll because we will come back to that in uh, in a few minutes time so that was basically to stock it out and it was dead simple for people to be able to pay for stuff nice and easy the way how i like it everybody liked it as soon as you said no no cash involved just scan the qr code they were like whoa okay that sounds good to us and finally we brought some fire extinguishers now you may remember i had to travel all the way up to uh reading to buy the fire extinguishers and um i've got the ones which are out in the field with the fire alarms on the trolley so you just have to turn the handle and it goes ding 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 ding, ding, ding. Uh, so we've got them again that's a one-time purchase we are going to have to have them inspected um, and looked at but at auction to buy them with all of the other ones that are stuck around the back of the farm at the minute i spent 158 pounds in total on that so our total outlay uh from what i've made a note of i'm sure there's more is eight thousand two hundred and forty six pounds and fifty two pence now there is one thing that is not included with that figure and that is my time my wages uh, I've not included it within that. I've done everything for free, which is a bit daft, some of you might say, that I really should be charging. But um, at this stage, it can't afford anything. So that was the outgoings. Now, the simple one. Let's look at the incomings. Let me just get my screen back on again. There we go. So that was out. Let's look at in. Change my notes over. So if we start off... What I've done here is I basically, because everything has been done by card, very, very little was done by cash. I did have the odd person who come up to me and said, oh, there's a tenner for a stain tonight, or there's a tenner for the hire of the fire pit. Um, very, very few people. It wasn't much at all. It wouldn't make any major difference to any of the figures. So what I've done is I've gone onto our card processor, which is Stripe, and I've just gone through all of the different accounts and I've looked to see what was the total income over the course of the year. That is what is the total amount that was paid out to me. I haven't gone as far as including all of the commissions and uh, all of the processing fees and everything else like that that we have to pay because it would just make this video way too long. And you're going to get down to the final figure anyway when we go through this. So coming in, first of all, so if we say the honesty shop, first of all, um, because we can include that. That might include the odd hire of like a fire pit and some other bits and pieces. So you will see that previously we spent £313 on the Honesty Shop stock. Now bear in mind the Honesty Shop was only up for about a quarter of the season. It wasn't up there for very long at all. But it managed to take £533.52. pence. So I think that didn't do too badly at all. That done quite well with that. So we're looking forward to next year having the shop open for the whole season. Um, we also know what stuff does sell and what stuff really didn't sell this year. And it was rather surprising stuff like rice and pasta just didn't sell at all. Um, I would have thought it would have sold, but obviously uh, the snacks, the sweets, the s'mores, that sort of thing, that went absolutely crazy. Now there are 
places online where you can go on and you can book a campsite and one of them is a place called campsites.co.uk not to be confused with uk campsites.co.uk that we paid 60 pound to and didn't really get much in return for it uh, so this is somewhere different that's like a massive directory of lots and lots of campsites and uh, lots of people can book in there and we had 1557 pounds coming from them over the course of the season the other one is the major one that pretty much everybody's heard of that is called pitch up and from them thankfully we only had 1141 pounds now you might wonder why i said thankfully it's because their fees are astronomical they're also an absolute pain in the butt to deal with but towards the end of the season once i um they asked me to complete a customer satisfaction form and so i completed it and i basically said that they weren't very good um so yeah so they did slightly pick up, but they still charge a lot in fees and aren't really very good. And of course, the final way that people can book is they can book direct through our website. And that we actually done quite well on. We had £1,166.50, which come through in bookings from that. So I'm quite pleased with that. So that brings our total income this year to £4,398.02 which isn't too bad at all. Now that does mean that from what I've worked out with these and that and that, that we've actually ended up with a loss of £3,848.50. However, next year we're not going to have to pay £2,800, £3,000, nearly over £4,000 for the planning applicant, um, application, planning consultants and that sort of thing. We're not going to have to pay out a lot for the bedding. Um, and there's other bits and pieces that we're not going to have to pay out for that we had to pay out for this year. Plus, next year is going to be year two. So we would have got all of the um, reviews up. We're no longer a brand new site. People can see what we're like. We've had people visit. We've had return visitors. Um, and all of that sort of stuff all helps. We've got the reviews. It all adds up. When we started, I think we were ranking at like 40 something in Google. We're now into the top 10 for the keywords that we're targeting. So we've got a lot going for us going forward into next year. So hopefully, fingers crossed, when we do this next year, that will change from being a negative to being a positive and it will make a nice, healthy profit. I have got issues with... Um, as I was explaining there, I didn't put down my time and I think that the time is going to be a major issue because work is going absolutely crazy at the minute. If it continues into next year, I might have to get somebody down there to be welcoming guests and doing that sort of thing. The other thing we are going to look at is that we had the five metre bow tent this year and the pricing for that was wrong because we were charging something like £65 a night for the five metre bow tent when it had all of the... Um, uh, all of the bedding and ev and everything else in there, but we were only charging £10 a night for the camping. So a group of six of you could camp and bring your own gear and everything for £60, or you could pay an extra fiver and have a glamping tent. So I think the big tent is going for next year. We're going to aim more towards the couples. We'll keep the three metre tent, but we'll also buy a few more of them and we'll get that up and going. Um, and go from there. So yeah, that is the end. Was it worth it? Well, I think it was. It was a good experience. It was good something to um, to look at to do. We we are we are going to keep it going for next year. Why not? It's um, nice easy money. It didn't cause us any major problems. Yes, we had the odd guest who was a bit of a pain, but everyone, the vast majority of everyone else, was absolutely perfect, fine, no issues whatsoever. So yeah, if you have any, do, if you do have any questions, please do leave them down below. I hope it's still light enough. I really don't want to flick the lights on uh, because obviously it does that flicker and we've got more rain coming in. We, as I explained earlier, we have actually closed early, but I'm recording this on the 29th and we've got yellow weather warnings and everything else like that. It, and I was up at the farm this morning and it is as muddy as anything underfoot. So I'm glad we did close early. We did have 12 people who wanted to book in for this weekend. And I was like, are you experienced campers? And they said, no. And I said, no, no chance, none at all. 
the ground is just too wet and uh, everything's too bad we're not going to have that at all so as i said any questions please leave them down below please do like comment and subscribe and until the next time thank you so much for watching and bye bye